Welcome to the video lecture series in history class 12th. Today we will discuss about fourth chapter which deals with thinkers, beliefs and buildings during 600 BCE to 600 CE, CE is common era. In this chapter we will deal with four subtopics, those are already discussed important historical monuments Sanchi and Amravati Stup, new questions, sacrifices and debates about Jainism and Buddhism and understanding new religious traditions through sculptures and paintings. Today we will discuss about new questions sacrifices and debates. This subtopic gives insight into tradition of sacrifices in ancient India about speculations on the significance of the sacrificial traditions, difference between ideas of Upanishadic thinkers and those of the fatalists and the materialists and also about importance of 6th century BCE in relation to sacrifices and debates. Around the mid first millennium BCE, BCE is before common era, many revolutionary changes they were taking place. On one side thinkers like Gautam Buddha and Mahavira, they tried to understand the mysteries of existence and the relationship between human beings and the cosmic order. On the other side, this was the time when new kingdoms and cities they were emerging and there were sea changes in the social and economic life in the Gangetic Valley. These thinkers means Gautam Buddha Mahavira along with finding answers to the questions like relationship between human beings and the cosmic order, they also tried to understand these social political and economic developments. Let us now see what were those tradition of sacrifices in ancient India. Many traditions of thought, religious beliefs and practices were followed since ancient period. Early Vedic tradition was one such tradition. It is also known as Rig Vedic period. Why Rig Vedic period? Because Rig Veda which was compiled between 1500 to 1000 BC, this is before common era. Now this Rig Veda is the only source that provides information about this period. And Rig Veda, it consists of mantras or hymns in praise of a variety of deities. The prominent deities were Agni, Indra and Som. When sacrifices were performed, these mantras were chanted and people prayed for cattle, sons, good health and long life etc etc means all materialistic things. One such example which is taken from Rig Veda is a prayer to Agni. The verses are sung 
along with sacrificial fire to invoke Agni, Agni the god of fire and offerings were made. Agni was expected to take these offerings along with prayers to other deities. It says, bring O strong one means Agni, this sacrifice of ours to the gods. O wise Agni, bring for us abundant food and wealth. O Agni, those who praise to you, bring them nourishment, wonderful cow, sons and offsprings that continues our line. Initially, the sacrifices were performed collectively. Later on, between 1000 BC to 500 BC onwards, some sacrifices were performed by the heads of the households for the well-being of their families. Some complex sacrifices such as Rajasuya Yag, it is king's inauguration sacrifice performed by the ancient kings who considered themselves powerful enough to be an emperor. And Ashumeda Yagya, in this case, in the case of Ashumeda Yagya, the army of the military campaign is led by a wandering horse, let loose from the capital of the king who performed this sacrifice. In case of Rajasuya Yajna, no horse was involved and Yajna were performed by kings because these Yajnas, they needed elaborate arrangements and kings depended on Brahmana priests to perform these rituals. Now, speculations on the significance of the sacrificial traditions. Around 6th century BC onwards, the speculations on the significance of the sacrificial traditions started. The Upanishads, they dealt with philosophical questions like search for the meaning of life, possibility of life after death and rebirth. It debated on issues like was rebirth due to past actions? Rather than performing sacrifices for materialistic benefits like wealth and sons, etc. For example, the verse from Chandogai Upanishad, it says about the true sacrifice, the wind that blows this is surely a sacrifice because while moving the wind purifies all this. Therefore, it is indeed a sacrifice. Here we can see the debate on the significance of the sacrificial rituals for materialistic benefits it had begun. Chandogai Upanishad again speculates about the nature of the self, this self of mine within the heart, it is smaller than paddy or barley or mustard or millet or the kernel of a seed of millet. This self of mine within the heart is greater than the earth greater than the intermediate space, greater than heaven, greater than these worlds and this was very much opposed to the sacrificial traditions for materialistic gains. So, lively debates and discussions, as many as 64 sects or schools of thoughts were in existence 
during this time and Buddhist texts give us a glimpse of lively discussions and debates among them. During these debates, teachers like Mahavira and the Buddha, they questioned the authority of the Vedas. According to them, liberation from worldly sorrows can be attained by individual efforts. And this was opposed to the sacrificial tradition and Brahmanical position, wherein an individual's existence was thought to be determined by his or her birth in a specific caste or gender. These debates, they took place in a Kuta Garshala, literally means a hut with a pointed roof or in grooves where travelling teachers, they halted for some time. If one philosopher succeeded in convincing his rival, then the followers of his rival also became his disciples. So, support for any particular sect could grow and shrink over time. Difference between Upanishadic thoughts and those of fatalist and materialist. The fatalist and materialist were one of those 64 sects. Fatalist or Ajivikas, they believed in destiny. According to Makali Gosala, the fatalist teacher Though the wise hopes that by doing good deeds and penance, they will gain karma and the fool should by the same means hope to gradually rid himself of his karma, neither of them can do it. Pleasure and pain, measured out as it were, cannot be altered in the course of transmigration it can neither be lessened nor increased. Just as a ball of a string will, when thrown unwind to its full length, so fool and wise alike will take their course and make an end of sorrow. On the other hand, a philosopher named Ajit Kesh Kimberlin, he taught materialism or Lokayat. He said, there is no such thing as alms or sacrifice or offerings, this world or the next. A human being is made up of the four elements. Elements are earth, water, fire and air. When he dies, the earthy in him returns to earth, the fluid to water, the heat to fire and the windy to air and his senses pass into space. Fools believe in donations, which is an empty lie. Fools and wise alike are cut off and perish. Nobody survives after death. Upanishads dealt with meaning of life, questions about life after death and rebirth. Soul, supreme soul and aim of human life is dissolution of human soul into supreme soul that is Param Brahma. So, fatalists believed that everything is predetermined and nothing can be changed. Materialists do not believe in life after death, whereas Upanishadic philosophy is stressed on karmic theory and questions about life after death. Importance of 6th century BCE in relation to sacrifices and debates. Firstly, instead of Vedic sacrificial traditions, the Upanishadic philosophy started gaining prominence. People started searching for new ways to attain moksha, that is, freedom from the cycle of birth and death. So, new philosophies emerged. Secondly, around 64 new philosophies emerged. Among these, Buddhism and Jainism gained prominence, resulting into change in Indian society and culture. Thirdly, 
Jainism and Buddhism stressed on self-control and penances. Their philosophy was very much similar to Upanishadic thoughts. Fourthly, the new philosophies like Jainism and Buddhism, they were simpler than Vedic sacrificial traditions. Unlike Vedic caste system, they treated everybody with equality and criticized birth-based caste system. They spread their message in simple common man's language. So, we discussed about tradition of sacrifices in ancient India, about speculations on the significance of the sacrificial traditions, difference between ideas of Upanishadic thinkers and that of the fatalists and the materialists and about importance of 6th century BCE in relation to sacrifices and debates. In the same chapter, next we will discuss about Jainism and Buddhism. Thank you.